Gender and Theology, uh, Mary Daly. The first top box then is just, because don't forget we always do this one first before we did Rosa Radford Ruth. So it's what is feminist theology or feminist theologians? Some feminist theologians suggest the patriarchal understanding of Christianity is mistaken and that a better, truer, non-sexist interpretation can be found. Christianity needs reinterpreting without the patriarchal elements cleansed of its distorting influences and that Christianity is intrinsically sexist and so flawed it should be dis disregarded or discarded with all its sexist practices and beliefs. These are the three main views taken by feminist theologians. Theologians, again, people that study theology, study God. Mary Daly is going to argue the third bullet point, that it's intrinsically and inherently sexist and therefore so flawed it should be disregarded. Whereas Ruther is arguing more that um, it's just mistaken and it needs to be cleansed. So Ruther is more the first and second bullet points, whereas Daly is saying, no, it is so flawed, let's get rid of it. Please don't forget to summarise as best as you can um, and to use the boxes that you've got available and the space available. This is a nice place to maybe start an introduction to present different arguments or just to be aware of the different perspectives that people do take. Box underneath, we then introduce Mary Daly. There she is. And so the next box is for that quote. I recommend that you write down that quote. If God is male, then male is God. The divine patriarch castrates women as long as he is allowed to live on in the human imagination. Brilliant quote. A little bit long to remember all of it but still doable for certainly the first part of it. If God is male, then male is God. Link it to that biblical quote from Genesis where it says that God made them in his image implies that God, if it's his image, it means that God is male. And if God is male, then male is God. Look also at the language that she uses. She uses brilliant language like castrate, the patriarchy that castrates women. Very strong, very powerful language. Obviously, her point there with the word castrates, because obviously castration is often used towards men, so she's using it towards women. As long as he is allowed to live on in the human imagination. Quite a Freudian idea as well with that one. So a fantastic place to start an essay, especially if you want to get that critical tone off straight away. Yeah. What by castrates, what does she mean? Just a bit like restricted by? Yeah. Yeah, because obviously castration is used yeah. to mean uh, for, for snipping of men, whereas she's obviously meaning like... So it, in some ways yeah. restricting us or taking away our womanhood or something like that yeah certainly something negative box and three is split into two just as you find on the slide the first box goes into the first part second box second part Men have, throughout history, sought to oppress women. Religion and Christianity is used as a tool to enforce this oppression with one patriarchal divine person. Patriarchal, patriarch, don't forget, is male ordered or male ruling. Um, divine person, which is God, who combines sexism, racism and classism into a three-headed monster. So Christianity has God, other main world religions, Islam has Allah, um, Judaism has Yahweh. So all of these are one male representative patriarchal divine person. And so not only that, but it also she brings this idea of a three-headed monster of sexism, racism and classism. Second box, women need to get beyond religion. The biblical and popular image of God, this is a God that's a patriarch in heaven who rewards and punishes, seen as God the Father, has spawned the oppression of women. Oh, fabulous language. Spawned the oppression. Basically meaning has created, has made spread, multiply, has just spawned this oppression of women. 